Welcome to the Fabulous 50s and Beyond. Our special guest today is Jennifer Gish, and we're going to be talking about the Gaither Suites at West Park. You stay tuned, and we'll be right back. And he'd say, go with what you got. Start from where you are. Give it your best shot. Keep reaching for that star. Get in the race. Keep your own pace. Keep moving and never stop. Just go. Go. Hey, go with what you got. Welcome back. As I said, our special guest today is Jennifer Gish. Jennifer, good to have you with us on our show today. We're going to be talking about Gaither Suites at West Park. I met Jennifer at the Paymac conference, and uh, we, we have some friends that also are at Gaither Suites. And I was uh, interested in what you told me at the conference that you just had a Lambert Day <laughs> <laughs> dinner or lunch there. Mm. Throw rolls and everything, right? <laughs> yes, it was wonderful. Well, <laughs> talk to us about Gaither Suites. Uh, we know that uh, they're in what you call West Park. Where are they located and everything? It, Tell us a little bit something. It's on 4960 Village Square Drive, um, right there in West Park, like you said. It's assisted living and a state licensed personal care home. So we have two levels of care all in one facility. Um, the licensed personal care home is regulated by OIG and assisted living is a certification through Dell. Um, in licensed personal care, we're allowed to give health care. Um, in assisted living, the regulation state, you're not. Um, we provide activities of daily living in either the assisted living or the licensed personal care. Um, and everybody interacts together and it's very nice to have the two levels of care in one facility because if they move into the assisted living and start needing more care, we can move them to the personal care where they can actually get some health care. Um, and most people are attracted to that in our facility. Well, when, when you say move them, they stay in the same apartment or, or do they move into a different? They have to move into a different apartment. Okay. But all the apartments are alike. Um, We've got six different layouts to choose from, but there's the same apartments in assisted living as they're in personal care. But in personal care, it's a licensed bed. So you have to move them into that section for them to be under the personal care. Well, I know there's, um, uh, as we get older, and I say we because I'm fit in that category, we uh, become a little more apprehensive to change. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the reason that I said it. But I think, I think explaining the difference in the two, you see, I have looked at a lot of facilities and a lot of things, and I still don't have a clear uh, understanding of the different types of care and the different types of facilities that are available. So assisted living, what does that mean? Assisted living is we provide an apartment and 24-hour staffing. Uh, we can help with activities of daily living. We can even do medication reminders. We do all the meals. In that one price, you get utilities besides a telephone. Um, so you've got 24-hour somebody there in case you need them. Um, there's, we've got a pendant system that they have. If they need help, they can push a button and the aides, it'll come across their beepers, their name and room number, and they'll go check and see what they need. So basically, it's a safer environment. Um, you, get, you get all three meals that you need nutrition-wise a day. We have a dietitian that plans um, our menus. So it's just little help that helps a lot. <laughs> okay, you do, uh, you do all the house cleaning, right? Yes, we do all the housekeeping. We got a housekeeper on staff. She thoroughly cleans the apartment once a week, and then we have aides there in case you need extra cleaning in between. You do the deep cleaning also? Yes. Is mm -hmm. that periodic? Well, once a week, they'll thoroughly go through your room. Okay. They'll okay. strip your bed. We do the linens and towels automatically, and then they'll remake your bed. So you don't have to do anything as far as housekeeping, uh, making your bed. Even if you need help dressing, we can do that and bathing. So. Mm -hmm. We, we provide a lot for people. And that's under the assisted living, right? Mm -hmm. 
And we do the same things in personal care. Well, I'm sure it's, it's the, the personal care is more detailed, yes, right? Yes, we can actually give health care. In personal care, we actually have a medical chart on them. So we order all their medicines. It's locked in the med room. Um, we can take doctor's orders over the phone. Um, and that's the main difference. And, and you, you actually uh, administer mm -hmm. the, the medication? Yes, we have the medical chart and we sign off every time that we give them the meds and make sure they take them. Um, in assisted living, the medications are in the room and we can do med reminders. So we can come by there and um, when it's time for them to take a medicine and we just make sure that they do take it. That's a problem. I mean, I, I, I know it is. I, I forget. Oh, yes. I mean, I got up yesterday morning and uh, started doing something real quick like and then all of a sudden, <clears throat> last night when it was time for my night meds, I said, I didn't take my morning meds. <laughs> 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 you know, and, and, and it's just, if, if, I, if I maintain kind of a schedule, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't eat, uh, didn't eat breakfast yesterday morning, so that's normally when I take my meds, and I didn't take them. And, and, and it's night, very important that you don't miss doses of certain Especially two days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I... Uh, but I did, and then uh, this morning I made it a point to remind myself to take my medicine. Uh, my medicines are such that I can, I can miss a day and be all right. Uh, but uh, beyond that, uh, if I take my night medicine when I take my blood thinner, that's the big thing there. Mm -hmm. They tell me hard about that because I have had arrhythmia, and uh, they don't want me to throw a blood clot, so I have to take that blood thinner pretty regular. But other than that, you know, uh, I do all right, but I know that uh, uh, different people have a lot of problems. Is did I take my medicine? That's the question. Yeah, that's a big, that is a big deal, and that's why a lot of people just end up in our facility. Their families feel more safe knowing that they took their medications when they're supposed to. Yeah, so uh, we we try to use the pill organizers, and at least we can open it up and see whether we took it or not. <laughs> Yes. But uh, uh, you say you have a full-time, I'm sure you have a dietitian on staff, a nutritionist, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the food and everything. And so, we have excellent cooks. Yeah. Um, I'm proud of our whole team that we got there in the kitchen now. Yeah. It's really good. Good. And um, activities. What oh, type yeah. of activities? Well, we have bingo that everybody loves all the time and then we have churches the 12 oaks comes in and does a mini service on mondays we have bible studies i've even got a bible study that one of my residents has it's every wednesday and um there's a lot that attend um, they play dominoes and different games we have lots of good singers that come and entertain our residents they really enjoy that so they're always something to do they do have sitter size every morning at 9 o'clock, um, so that's a good way for exercising. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a kitchen band? A kitchen band? I think they've been to our facility. There, there, there's one from the senior, senior center, think, mm -hmm. and, uh, and they, they generally make the rounds a lot of times, and they're pretty unique. I mean, they're, they're seniors themselves. Yes, and they're really fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, and so, and so, so they do that. But it's always interesting to, uh, to, to see them perform and do the. Now, do you, uh, you, you take trips out? Oh, yes. Every Thursday, they take them out to lunch, and they usually just sit around and decide where they want to go. Um, they go to a variety of different restaurants. Um, they go to Walmart once a week to get things that they need, like personal items. They go to the do dollar store periodically, too. So, but if they need to run up to the drugstore, we'll take them, you know. So, if they need to get out, they will. Okay. So, so you can provide different transportation, types of transportation yes. for them to do that. Mm -hmm. um, how old is your facility? It's pretty new, isn't it? It was built in 98. Is it that old? Yes, um, and my owners that own it now, they bought it in 06, I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure. Yeah. I just wondered because I, uh, I, uh, I know that it, uh, it just seemed like it popped up overnight, but it's, it, it is kind of It's one off of the, the first, beaten path, though. Isn't it? Yes. It's kind of back in that West Park Village, so not a lot of people know about it. Yeah. Is it, is it, it's behind the garden center, isn't it? Lowe's. Uh, the uh, oh Montgomery Gardens yeah, yes yeah. they built there 
I would say a couple years ago. Yeah. So yeah. we're directly behind them. Yeah. But if you're coming from Walmart, Lowe's is on the right, and we're right, right back behind Lowe's. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know that it, it, I always thought it was a real uh, attractive facility, a nice food. So how many? Uh, sweets. Sweets, yes, <laughs> do you have? I have 40 suites. 40 suites. 14 of them are assisted living, and 26 are personal care suites. Mm -hmm. So we do have more personal care suites, um, but it just it works out well for us. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. And um, um, I, I, I want to talk about in the next section about some of the be specific or some about some of the services that you do provide. So uh, you can be thinking about that as we uh, get ready to take our break. And you stay tuned and we'll be right back. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to the Fabulous 50s and Beyond. Our guest today is Jennifer Gish, and we're talking about uh, senior care and uh, the different types of senior care that's available and uh, some of the facilities. That we want to talk about now some of the choices that you might have and uh, we'll be talking about some of the things that's put out by one of the Kentucky uh, organizations that oversees this type of work, right? That's what they, mm -hmm. they oversee and they kind of write the guidelines mm -hmm. and some of the things. And actually... Uh, this booklet is probably available for the people called uh, a choice so they can go through. It's a generic type uh, It's required that the assisted living facilities provide anybody asking for information about a facility to give them a providing choice. Um, it's a consumer publication for selecting a facility. Um, it's printed by CALFA, Kentucky Assisted Living Facilities Association. Um, we've got different types of assisted livings here in Paducah. Um, you need to visit all of them, and you need to make sure that you find the one that best fits you. Um, some of them are larger, and some of them are smaller. Um, in here, it tells you frequently asked questions. Um, it gives you the laws regarding assisted living. Um, and it also gives you the regulations. So it's got a lot of information in there that you would want to go over and look at in picking out an assisted living home. 
It also gives you a personal checklist so you can actually read down through there and see what best fits you. Uh, my facility might not be as attracted to you as another one here in town. Um, we all have good service though and um, it's, it's a good place to be. Well, I know that there are, as we said earlier, there are a lot of different, there are different types. And I don't know that a lot of different types is a good term, but there are different types of facilities that provide different care. Exactly. My facility is not locked down. Um, it's secure. It's locked from the outside, but residents can come and go as they need to. Mm -hmm. There are assisted livings that have actually an Alzheimer's unit in them. So it's a complete lockdown for um, those people that are in it elopement risk. Mm -hmm. um, there's also different personal care homes um, as different than we are. Um, so it's just about getting out there and looking and seeing what everybody has and everybody offers to see what best fits you. Mm -hmm. Well that, that, I think that's what's important is that we can show the different types of facilities and what they provide and then let the people make up their mind as mm -hmm. to what, as, as to what what it is that they that they look for, and that that's real important. Uh, the, is the Kentucky law pretty strict now? Have they tightened up some of their laws and, and on their on their providing care for seniors? Um, I wouldn't say it's strict. Um, they're just very very specific on what what you know you're able to do or not able to do in each kind of setting. Is so, there an omnibus, um, whatever that word is? Ombudsman. Right. <laughs> yes, you can contact an ombudsman and ask, you know, questions to them. They're an advocate for the residents. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they're important to talk to as well. And, does, and AARP gets involved in some of that too, don't they? Uh, AARP? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Because I know they, we've had had them on before, and they have people that uh, actually do they inspect or do they just get involved? The ombudsman comes around periodically and interviews our residents um, to make sure they have no complaints or anything mm -hmm. that we're not addressing. Mm -hmm. And if they do, they would come to us, you know, and they, you know, they wouldn't tell us a name. They would just say, you know, they're concerned about right, something, right, and right. then you know we would take care of it. Yeah. So that's that's a very good service. Yeah, very good. Well, I, that's what I wondered about because I know that uh, that there's a, there's a, there is in some cases abuse that goes on, and I know you try to watch it. I'm sure you try to watch it as as much, much as you can. Um, your units are, and the different units in the different places. Uh, there, can a husband and wife share a unit? Oh yes, we have a husband and wives in our facility. And, um, you know, everybody hates the transition of moving from home to a facility. Um, and we help with the transition, not with just them, but mm -hmm. for their family members. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it's just as hard, if not harder, on the families. Yeah. You know, they feel like they're putting their parents in a, a facility. And um, so we're there to support with that. And um, we've been through it a lot, and we know what to expect and how to cope with it. Um, it's just a, it's a, it's a good thing though. Once they make the transition, I have seen so many of them. They're like, I'm so happy I'm here because I have somebody to talk to all, you know, and socialize with. It's healthy for them. Well, I know we ran into that with a family <clears throat> member who really didn't want to go. They didn't go into one of these type of facilities, but they went into another uh, a type, uh, an open, uh, it's not assisted or anything like Independent? that. Independent? Independent, I yes, guess. Yes, that's and, another uh, good type of facility. And um, uh, they really didn't want to go until they got there. Then they loved it? And then they said, I should have been there five years ago. I've had them say that to me. <laughs> <laughs> I you have. Know, uh, because, because it was a single person up in the years. They got into the facility and then they had friends and they loved to do puzzles and they loved to play cards. 
and, uh, and they cook their own meals, but I mean, it's, it's independent, I guess. Is what it is. But, and it's uh, about quality of life. Yeah. They actually have a better quality of life yeah. when they yeah. have all those things. So that's very important. The hardest part was giving up the furniture and the stuff. You know, you go from a full-size house into a little small spot. But uh, she was very happy after she got there, you know. Yeah, and it's your familiar surroundings you're giving up. So right. And that's hard, too. Right. But if they take all that, you know, the stuff they can with them, and it becomes home. Then right. they call our place home or the place you're talking about. Oh, I know. We When we moved back here, we uh, we downsized about 75% in space. Oh. <laughs> and uh, uh, that was a pretty good uh, pretty good move down, you know. Well, maybe not 75, 60%, I guess. But that was that was quite a, a change for us to to do that, you know, was to downsize that much. And uh, it took us a while to get used to it. Mm -hmm. Plus the fact we had our own business and I had guys that worked for me that could do what I needed done. Now I'm having to do what I needed done. My son is still in Florida, so he's not helping. <laughs> <laughs> so all of, we, had, we had all these changes that we had to make 20 years ago ourselves. And, oh, yeah. And, and, and a lot of people in our facility, they have family that lives out of town, their sons and daughters. So they're not there for them all the time. Mm -hmm. And so it's important for them to be in a facility like mine. So. Yeah. Well, I think I think that's important, and um, I just want you to know I appreciate you being with us today as we've talked about this because there is so much that uh, uh, it, there are so many questions that people have. Well, I appreciate you having me, and I'll let you know that um, if I can help people with my facility, I'm always looking to find a place that fits them better. Mm -hmm. um, that's my goal: is to place everybody where they need to be. Well, and and, and I. I I'm sure that you're open if they just sit down and ask the questions. Oh, yes. And the best thing to do is write the questions down so you can think of them when you're there for an interview just to ask about and and, uh, and look around the facility and see what it is. And, and we suggest that they do that to all of them. We've oh, had, yes. We've had, uh, I, I, I don't know of one that we, maybe a few, we hadn't had you on, but we've had mo a lot of the other facilities on yes. as we've talked about them. And, let people see what is available, and that's that's part of what this show has always been about: was to let people know what's going on and what's available, mm -hmm. and uh, and the services and the different things that are available for the different people, because there are a lot of services and a lot of things that are available for seniors that they don't know about. Exactly. And uh, that that's been our goal: is to let them know about what's going on out there and what they, what they can look into and what they can find and what they can participate in. There are a lot of activities. I mean, it's like until we started doing the show years ago, I didn't know that transportation was available for the seniors like it is. I knew yeah. there was a limited transportation service available for them, but I didn't know all of the services that PATS provided and the different ones that they provided for the people uh, in, in this area. But they're here and they're available. And... Uh, uh, some of them are free and some of them are minimal cost. Mm, and uh, and I mean very minimal cost when yeah. you think about it. And I, I've come to find out that in some of the some of the uh, transportation things that if a person is not able to really go by themselves, the person that can go with them for free. Yeah. And, and, and so all of these things are available. Well, we provide transportation to the doctors. Um, one of our staff members will go and stay with them the whole time and bring them back. So that's great. That's another thing we provide. Yeah, well, that's great. Well, listen, again, it's been good to have you, and uh, we, we just want you to know that uh, we look forward to seeing your facility and everything. We'll get sure. by there one of these days. It's to good look to at see it. you again. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but you, uh, we want you to know that uh, the Fabulous Fitness and Beyond is here for you and to provide you with information of the services available and the different facilities that are available. And we want you to uh, check out what we talk about here on our show. Remember, you can get in touch with us by uh, uh, email or you can get in touch with us by uh, on, the, on the Internet. It's thefabulous50s.net. You can go to thefabulous50s.net, see a replay of our shows and everything. So we encourage you to do that. You stay tuned. We'll come back again next week with another show. Remember, you can See as well as I used to 
Can't run as far or as fast Sometimes I think that the old me Is becoming exactly that But when I start thinking of all I don't have That's when I tell poor me Beethoven was 50 and deaf as a post When he wrote his ninth symphony 